everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Doodling Through Education. For my CC students, this is CC Cycle 1, Week 4 Science. For everyone else, that just means that we're learning about plant cells. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and head on over to doodlingthrougheducation.com. Um, grab your science workbook. You can do that there. There's four worksheets for this week um, and we are building a plant cell this week and then of course we have mystery multiple choice and some matching exercises as well. I think uh, you'll really enjoy it and it'll help to solidify the things you learn in this video. But without further ado, let's go ahead and start doodling. Today we are going to continue talking about cells and expanding our knowledge of God's creation. Last week we talked about animal cells and this week we're going to talk primarily about plant cells. You will notice when you look at a plant cell that there are many of the same parts that are in an animal cell as well. But you will also notice that there are some additional parts and some parts that look a little bit different but are named the same thing. And so today I want to focus on the parts that are different from an animal cell. So remember that some of the parts are the same and we've already talked about that when we talked about the animal cell. In this video I'm going to only talk about the parts that are different in a plant cell. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Plant cells form the basic unit of life in organisms of the plantae kingdom. They are also classified as eukaryotic cells. And as we learned from last week, this means that they have a nucleus in their cell. We also know that eukaryotes are organisms that are made up of many different complex cells. And plantae are included in these. So there are three parts of a plant cell that I want to narrow in on that are different than an animal cell. So we know that both animal and plant cells both have a cell membrane. And remember, the cell membrane separates the outside of the cell from the inside of the cell. It can also help filter things in and out of the cell and keep things in the cell or keep things out of the cell. Now, plant cells also have what is called a cell wall. This is a tough outer case and it is made of cellulose. Animal cells don't have this. Cell walls help to support the plant and gives the plant cells a rigid structure. Cellulose, which the cell wall is made out of, is made up of a polymer and a polymer is just a long and repeating chain of the same molecule. Cellulose is also responsible for plant cells unique rectangular shapes where an animal cell is usually an irregular or round type of shape. Another difference between animal and plant cells is that um, even though both of them have those organelles called vacuoles, a plant cell's vacuole is much larger and there is typically only one. So a plant cell has one large vacuole whereas animal cells can have many small vacuoles. And so remember a vacuole is used for storage but in plants it can also be used for maintaining the shape of the cell. So why is it so big? Well, plant cells need to store food and water because they don't have the ability to move around and find food or water to consume. So they must have that large vacuole as a place to store these things so that when they get food and water, they can store it for times when they don't have enough. The last main difference between animal cells and plant cells is that plant cells have an organelle called a chloroplast. Animal cells do not have this organelle at all. The chloroplast is very special and 
This is where sunlight is converted into food and energy for the plant. This is a process that we have called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis depends on a little molecule that is called chlorophyll. Now this molecule is green and is located in all of the chloroplasts. This is what gives plants their green color. So whenever you go outside and look at a plant and see that it's green, it, you are looking at chlorophyll. Human cells and animal cells don't need chloroplasts because we get our energy from eating and digesting food and not through photosynthesis. An interesting fact about chloroplasts is they will even move around in the cell to put themselves in the best position where they can absorb the most sunlight. There are about 500,000 chloroplasts in a single square millimeter of a leaf. So both animal cells and plant cells contain membrane bound organelles like mitochondria and a nucleus and a Golgi apparatus. Animal cells are often much smaller than plant cells as well. An animal cell ranges in size from 10 to 30 micrometers, whereas a plant cell ranges in size from 10 to 100 micrometers. Overall, it is amazing to realize that God made each and every cell on this earth and that he created them all to serve their unique purposes in life and to bring him glory. What an amazing God to be praised. And that's all we have for today. So for this week, I want you to complete those four worksheets as your homework. I think it'll really help to solidify the things that you learned in this video. And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.